I know there's people who are actually craving and wanting to become Sangomas and I hope you watch this video before you even make that decision to become a Sangoma. Being a Sangoma, it doesn't mean you will make money, you will be rich. There's a lot of people who are Sangomas and are poor at this moment. As a matter of fact, they are actually getting desperate and they are starting to treat people. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Lindy Sherris. In this channel, we love God and we expose the devil because people are perishing because they lack knowledge. In today's video, I am going to share three things that actually helped me when I went to initiation school. So if you are watching this face for the first time, let me just share just a background when it comes to me. I used to be a Sangoma. A Sangoma, if you're not in South Africa, it is basically like a witch doctor, a traditional healer. But then there are good ones and not good ones, but all of that falls into one category because they all belong to the devil because the devil Devil is the one who's controlling that. So I was a Sangoma for many years and as I was busy practicing and learning how to do different things, I used to trick people and this is something that I was taught in initiation school. So back to initiation school. Uh, first day when I had to go there, it was just trauma for me because I wasn't ready. I didn't prepare my mind. You know when you know that you will go to initiation school like two weeks after or maybe like a month with me i didn't know i just woke up and my dad said i had a dream and i started wanting to go and dive in a river and then he knew that i needed to go to initiation school uh, immediately and this was something that was happening al around those days where i would drive and when i see a river i would feel like you know what let me just stop this car and run to the river and i would just jump in there and i felt like if i jumped inside water i was going to feel like i breathe properly it felt like the oxygen that i was getting around it wasn't enough for me to breathe and if i jump inside water somewhere in any dam i was going to find a home down there so when people say they went to initiation school under water i actually believe them because that's the feeling that i had and yet there's so many people as well who went under water and never came back and my dad did say that um back in mozambique when he was young there was someone who actually went underground uh, underwater to um, do initiation school but he doesn't believe that and I can say in a way when I hear testimonies online of people who are certain is they actually saying that there is a world down there where the devil and his angels and Satan and his demons are actually controlling and it is evil down there and people do go there it's like a dry land where there's just there there's no love everything there is just selfish and and just the worst you can think of so those are the testimonies that people are sharing so back to me going to initiation school so while i was there from the first day I remember i wasn't ready so already i was hurt and when i got there they had to like cut my hair they actually didn't even cut my hair they started putting this red um something that we use to make our 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 floor ready so you know back in the rural areas even in some places here where i stay you see like that the stoop is actually red so that thing that they used to make the stoop red i forgot the name that's the thing that um was used to in our hair and then it was just horrible guys and another thing that we had to do every morning we had to drink this foam it's like a mixture of some moti but then it tasted like you know um dishwashing liquid that was actually um dissolved and you had to drink that foam but guys that was horrible something that i had to drink every day so even today when i see a foam i always think about that situation where we had to drink this every day so it got to a point where i was there now remember now i was the only one who was sort of like educated and i feel like um maybe if you go there and pay those people your life will be right but for me i feel like out of everyone i was the one who was just not treated like nicely because um i was considered the educated one so everything to do with me even if i didn't know something that they were teaching us like it always lingered back to my education like uh, this is easy why are you not getting it and i just didn't like that every time i would get hit and the second thing that i really 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 didn't like is the dancing guy so 
by nature, I cannot dance. Like, guys, you will never see me dancing because I'm not good at dancing. My daughter tried to teach me TikTok, trying to, like, grow my TikTok account or her TikTok account. Guys, I always struggle. Like, I really cannot dance. And now, having to catch the rhythm, and they will say that the spirit will dance. And the spirit didn't dance. I had to dance on my own, even though the, sometimes the spirit will take over. But then the dancing wasn't nice. And yet, there were people who were there and could actually dance nicely guys and with me every time i would try to dance people would just laugh all the laughter it just reminded me of my life back in high school where i just didn't enjoy where i just didn't feel love where I, I just wanted to finish my metric and be out of there because it wasn't nice i didn't have friends the friends that i had um decided they didn't want me in their group and one day i just made a decision and that like, you know what I'm not going to have friends and uh, that actually uh, contributed to me not having friends even now like I'm, i struggle to make friends i can have few, few friends there and there but then i'm not the type who like okay friend let's go there and there you know how people are involved like in friendships and me and my sister as well we are friends but then you know that friendship is not a friendship that you can just go with your sister everywhere it can happen but then she's not that type of a person so it just um contributed more to my low self-esteem because now i couldn't dance and now the things that they were teaching there sometimes i would understand fast because i would take notes and remember but then some things whenever i got something wrong like they'll say ah the educated one doesn't know and also it didn't help the fact that i went there with my car because i had to go in the morning and go to work and then come back in the evening so now guys think about it my hair was red and then i had to wear all these bits and with all of that i had to go to work so i really didn't like looking like that going to work and then people at work asking questions and like enough i didn't have friends who were judgmental even though my uh, two friends knew god uh, especially one specific one she knew god but she didn't judge me she kept asking questions and asking questions even now i really felt like i really feel if she shared the gospel then maybe i was going to listen but at, at that point i don't think i was going to listen because I was in deep thinking, you know what, let me just finish this. All my life I've been struggling and running away from this. And because of this, I mean, so many car accidents, I was getting sick. So I was just tired, broken relationships. You know, when it comes to relationships, guys, like you would get so hurt. Like someone would just leave you without a reason. And they will say it's because the spirit is not happy and all of that. So guys, that I didn't like. But the most thing that hurt me the most, guys... It was when my mom passed away. So while I was there, my mom became sick. And um, and uh, at some point, I wanted to stop and take care of her. And my dad said to me, you know what? I don't think your mom will make it. And you have to come back home before she pass on. Like she did, He didn't say it like that. But I could see that he was actually implying that my mom is not really doing good. And I told um, my gobella, my gobella is like the initiator and say, you know what, I want to go back home. And she said to me, if you go back home, then it means when you come back, you'll have to start all over again because you're not even allowed to go and bury your mom if your mom passed on. And it got to that point where I was like, you know what, even if um, I have to start all over again, there is no way I am missing my mom's funeral. There is no way I am missing my mom last few days in this world. And I, I just stopped, guys, and went back home to take care of my mom. And when I got home, guys, yeah, it was bad. Like, you know, something that's rough. Like, my mom would wake up in the at night and start screaming, saying the house is burning. She was just seeing different things. And when I think about it, if... As if we knew God, then we were going to pray, and some of these things were going to live. But because now we didn't know, we invited all these spirits, and my dad, the spirits as well, the, all the sangomas that we used to call at home, and then sometimes they would come and say they're just coming to strengthen us, and they will even use a razor, you know, like put an incision of muti, and that guy so wasn't nice. And my mom passed on. 
and I had to go bury her and immediately after that I had to go back. So now imagine going back to initiation school knowing no, knowing that back home you, you don't have a mom anymore. And knowing back that when I go back home, my mom is she's not there anymore. It's just me and my father and my baby. And it was hard, guys. It was hard having to continue. And like enough when I went back, they just had to wash me with different things and then they said I could continue because Guys, that was uh, not nice for her to say that I wasn't going to bury my mom because it was so important that going to my mom's funeral it was going to delay the progress. So guys, that's the evil that we are facing when we go to these places. So if you are planning to go there or maybe you are told that you need to go to initiation school, guys, don't go. Start praying now. Start praying now. Ask God to help you. The only thing... The only one that these spirits are scared of is the Bible and God. And if you're not going to start praying now, you are going to end up there. And if you are going there to make money, guys, there is no money there. There is no money. And people get so desperate to a point that they end up going to all cards to get some things in order to add to this ancestral sangoma, um, whatever um, house. So that they, they can make it strong. And once you go there, you have to sacrifice with something. And sometimes you would see some of these people who are actually becoming rich because of they are saying they are the biggest Sangomas. Those people went to cults, guys. Or cults, guys. They got something from a country, Nigeria, Mozambique. And these things, you have to sacrifice something. Sometimes they will even sacrifice with their kids. Some they will even sacrifice with the family members. I know the one, my aunt, who went to these places to get something to make sure that his, I mean, her Sangoma staff is becoming powerful is because she went there and sacrificed the family every year would lose a family member and all of that only stopped when i became a christian when i prayed and said no one would die because around um september october someone would die in the family we knew like we knew like we were all scared saying okay who's going to die this year because it was like that and that's the occult that's the um, things that she got from going to seek other help to make sure that the Sangoma things becomes powerful. So guys, do not even want to go. Rather look for a job. Rather look for a way to make money because going to be a Sangoma is not going to save you. So yeah, guys, this is what I wanted to share with you guys. And if you are struggling, struggling with this calling, do comment so that we can all pray with you. It can only go with prayer, reading the word and trusting trusting the holy spirit to help you and also having faith in god if you do not have faith in god even if your faith is wavering you're not sure just have faith and just trust the little that you are trusting just pray to god to help your unbelief and do not fear the more you fear the more these things will actually kill you so yeah guys um i know you are going to fear but then fear with the lord knowing that God is going to fight for you. He is bigger than anyone else. Do not allow it, guys. So yeah, guys, this is what I wanted to share. These are the things that actually helped me the most when I went to initiation school. So yeah, guys, um, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification and share this video with anyone out there who is thinking of going to initiation school. Thank you, guys.